Well, serverless really consists of two main groups of technologies. One is called backend as a service, and one is called functions as a service. So backend as a service is a little bit like yet another one of those as a services. It's a little bit like software as a service. Um, and those are things like GitHub, uh, Salesforce, Travis CI, all of those kind of things. But with backend as a service, we're not outsourcing organizational processes like those other tools are. We're actually outsourcing components of our application. So a few examples. Um, so one I like always to bring up first is, is Google Firebase. And Google Firebase is not particularly well known by folks like typical server-side developers like me. But Google Firebase is a database that is really popular with mobile developers. And the reason they love it so much is because they don't have, any, have to do any database administration, and they don't have to write any server-side software. They can have their mobile apps communicate directly with the database. And Firebase is really set up for that kind of world with all of its security. Another example is Auth0, and similarly, AWS Cognito. And both of these are services that do user management and password management and all that kind of stuff that so many of us have written exactly the same code like 10 times in a row. Well, the good news is we don't have to write that code anymore because we can rely on services like Auth0 and AWS Cognito. So these are kind of newer things, and a few of you probably haven't heard of these. But interestingly, I also see a few of these sort of more traditional products as being serverless backend as a service as well. So things like DynamoDB, that's Amazon's key value store, and also, also even Amazon S3. Uh, I actually think of S3 as being the original serverless product. Now, the common theme to all of these is that they are components of our application that other people develop and operate on our behalf. The other half of serverless is functions as a service, <coughs> excuse me, or FAS. And FAS is a new way of deploying server-side software uh, oriented around deploying individual functions and operations. Now, FAS is where a lot of the hype has come from in the last year and a half, but it's really just part of the overall serverless story. So let me explain a little bit about fun how functions as a service works. When we traditionally deploy server-side software, we start with a host instance, and that's a container or a virtual machine host. Uh, then we deploy an application within our host, <clears throat> and this application is typically an operating system process and usually contains code for several different operations. FAS changes this type of deployment. First of all, we strip away the host instance and then the application process from our model. And instead, we focus on just the operations or functions that express our application's logic. Instead of a host, we have a vendor FAS platform. Uh, and we deploy our functions to the FAS platform as very, very basic code units. So for a code that we're writing in JavaScript or Python, these are just bits of source code zipped up. Uh, for code that we're writing in Java or Scala or even Clojure, uh, we, we put those just in a simple jar file. So there's nothing more complicated than that when it comes to deployment. Now, the individual functions uh, are not constantly active in a server process, uh, just sitting around idle waiting to run, as they would be in a traditional app. Instead, what we do is we tie each function uh, to a specific event. <clears throat> and when that event occurs, the FAS platform brings up uh, a container for us completely on, on its own. We don't have to do any management of that container at all. And it executes our function in that container with the, event, with, with the event that happened. Once the function has finished executing, the platform is free to tear down the container. Now, functions as a service depends significantly on the types of events that we can configure our functions to run on, unsurprisingly. Uh, but fortunately, there are a whole ton of different events that we can use uh, when, we're, when we're using this stuff. And that allows us to actually develop many of the kinds of server-side programs that we would normally write, but using this paradigm. So let me give you some examples. So first of all, you can use a message bus uh, for, mes for message event-driven systems. 
you can use a network file system or an object store like S3 uh, for file processing. And this also lets you create data pipelines. You can use time as your event. And that means that you can replace your cron process and your cron applications using functions as a service. And finally, you can, of course, use HTTP requests as your event source. So that means that you can develop web apps uh, and web API services uh, using functions as a service.